Hey YouTube, so I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the Mandelbrot set, but for those of you who haven't, this is pretty much it. It's not art or magic, it's just math, and actually really simple math at that. The image you're looking at right now wasn't generated with some crazy third-party graphics library or a fractal engine of some sort. Uh, this is just an HTML canvas, and using only a few simple lines of JavaScript, I was able to brute force all of the pixel calculations. Uh, this image was rendered in pretty much just a few seconds. So in this video, I'll talk a little bit about the math behind the Mandelbrot set and the basics of the program that I wrote, and then I'll showcase how it works. So if you only care about the program, feel free to click the GitHub link in the description and try it out. Otherwise, stick around and enjoy the rest of the video. So the Mandelbrot set, what is it? Is it an equation or a graph? It's actually much simpler than that. It's just a set of numbers, that's it. So any number you can think of is either part of the Mandelbrot set or not part of the Mandelbrot set. The only reason it's interesting is because it applies not only to integers, not only to real numbers, but also to complex numbers as well, or any number with an imaginary component. So here is a more mathematical depiction of the set that I've borrowed from Wikipedia. The horizontal axis here represents the real portion of the number, while the vertical axis represents the imaginary portion. So any black point represents a number that's part of the set, while the white points are not part of the set. So naturally, there are two questions that probably come to mind. How do you determine if a number is part of the set? And why do so many Mandelbrot depictions have so many colors if the reality is really just black and white? Uh, so luckily, both of these questions sort of have the same answer. So this is how it's calculated. Pick any number and call it Z0. Now, you're going to use an iterative method to calculate the series of Z values one at a time. So for n equals 0, Z1 can be calculated as z naught squared plus z naught, and then z2 is z1 squared plus z naught, and so on. And as you calculate more values of z in the series, one of two things is going to happen. Either the magnitude of z is going to grow out towards some infinite value, which is called diverging, or it's going to remain finite somewhere relatively close to zero, which is called converging. Any number that converges is part of the Mandelbrot set. So why the different colors? They basically just represent probabilities that a number will be part of the set. We can never really know for sure. If a magnitude of z ever extends beyond 2, it will definitely diverge, and that's easy to prove. However, it's convergence that's difficult to prove. There are some numbers that will appear to converge for millions or maybe even billions of iterations, only to diverge later in the series. The usage of colors is basically just a pragmatic way of saying, hey, if it hasn't diverged after x terms in the series, it's part of this color set. All you would have to do is choose a series of depths and colors that make visual sense to the viewer. The program that I've written allows you to do pretty much exactly that. So this is basically the program. Um, the output here is just an image, so you could do whatever you want with it if you want to like save it or copy it. Um, and you pretty much have the full creative freedom to render whatever image you want, whatever resolution, size, however far you want to zoom, whatever section you want to focus on, whatever color scheme you want to use. Um, you have the entire freedom to do that here. So that's sort of what the goal was when I was writing this. Um, with the height in pixels, that's pretty straightforward. Um, the actual center of it, this is if you think back to that uh, mathematical picture of the real and imaginary axis from a little bit earlier in the video, this is basically just the point that the center of the canvas is on. So for example, if I wanted to move the render up a little bit, I could move my imaginary portion if I made it like 0.5 instead of 0 and then click render. Now you'll see we've gone up a little bit so we can basically, you know, if we wanted to focus on this area when we zoom in, um, then you would want to do that. So here, this is the representation of zoom. So all I've done is Euclidean width. So if you imagine what the unit would be for the entire width of this canvas, 2.7 meaning you're seeing like 2.7 units here. So if I made this smaller, you would zoom in. So if I made this something like 1 instead of 2.7, we would we would zoom into this area here with a full, uh, a full width of only one unit instead. And then everything beyond that is pretty much just dealing with depths and colors. So the background color, that's everything that's pretty much not part of the set at all. And then you can add or subtract as many depths and colors as you want. So here, basically by default, I have this color scheme that I picked, but you can you can do really whatever you want. If you wanted to add more, click this plus button and some more will come in or the minus button to get rid of them. 
and then obviously render to render. Um, so I'll just basically try to quickly show what a use case for this would be. If you're looking at an area and you think like, oh, this looks kind of interesting, maybe you'll zoom in on it. So if it's sort of in the center, I drop my width to maybe like 0.5, click render, and now you see it a little better. Maybe you can go in more, maybe like, I don't know, 0.3. And as you zoom in, you'll start to see that, hey, the calculations for your depth maybe could be a little bit better because back when we were out at a width of 2.7, the depths were kind of engineered correctly, but now we're a little deeper, so we want to increase our depths. So I'll keep the color scheme the same, but I'll bump these all up by 10. So all the teens to the 20s, 20s to the 30s, 30s to the 40s, 40s to 50s and the deepest one at 64. And now you'll see when I click render, you're gonna be looking at pretty much the same thing, but all of these color sections are going to sort of shrink more accurately to represent what the actual Mandelbrot set is. So I'll go ahead and click render to show you that. So now you get a much more detailed depiction of it. And it's sort of not, you know, it's an art and a science to try to determine, you know, how deep you should be rendering based on your current zoom. But the idea is the more you zoom in, the more you're going to want to uh, use deeper levels to represent you know, the colors that you've chosen. So if I wanted to go more to this side, maybe I would move my center over a little bit. So instead of going at minus you know, 0.7, maybe I would do something like minus 0.65. That would shift everything over a little bit. Let's see how that looks. So yeah, now we've gone over a little bit. Maybe we want to go down a little bit. So I'll make this like 0.45. You know, you can adjust your centers as you want. And then now that you found the area that you're interested in, maybe you'll zoom in now to like 0.1, something like that. And this is what you're looking at. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole idea of it. Um, obviously, you don't have to use this color scheme. These are a bunch of hex codes that I've picked. If you wanted to get super minimalistic, you could um, only maybe use one. So for example, let me get rid of all of these. Um, Instead of 22, maybe I'll use something like, I don't know, 40. And then whatever this color is, um, you can use hex codes. You could even use like English colors. So if I type like the word red here and click render, you'll see the black background with basically red at whatever depth 40 is. If you want it more specific, you could bump it up to 50. Render, you know, you get the idea. Purple, you know, it's pretty user friendly. So yeah, um, I have used this going as deep as a viewport of one trillionth. So 0 0.000, you know, for 11 zeros and then a one, and it still works perfectly fine. Um, the render times are usually pretty good. Going uh, really, really far zooming in with the viewport actually doesn't even impact rendering times that much. And actually this doesn't even really impact rendering times that much either. So I made this something like 200. It might not look that great just because we're not that far zoomed in, but you'll notice the render time is actually pretty reasonably quick. The only thing that really slows down the render times is if you were to bump up the actual size of the canvas. If I wanted to, let's say, double this to like 1200 by 1000, this might take a few seconds to render, as you'll see. But once it completes, you do get the full image here. And, you know, if you wanted to generate a desktop background or something, you could always do that or, you know, shrink it back down if you don't care that much about the resolution. But yeah, it's basically up to you and how hard you want your browser to work and how much you're willing to wait. You can generate basically whatever image you want and um, leave you with whatever product you're looking to create. So this is the example of that one trillion zoom I was talking about earlier. Not anything super special going on in this image, but this really serves as more of a proof of concept that you could pretty much render anything you want. Uh, I don't think I've used the word fractal yet in this video, but it should be pretty obvious now that the Mandelbrot set is in fact a fractal and you can zoom in with infinite detail and it'll always be something interesting. I'll put the inputs for this image in the description if anybody wants to try it out on their own. So that's pretty much the end of the video. I'm really curious to see what kind of images you guys are able to render. Leave a comment with your inputs if you're able to find any areas that are strange or unique. If you need some creative influence, check out some of the Mandelbrot Zoom videos on YouTube. They do a good job of highlighting some of the more interesting parts of the fractal. And as always, like, comment, and share if you enjoyed the video or the program that I wrote. And consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks everyone.